Hey, Cody Rhodes, I'm going to need you to do me a favor, or maybe just yourself a favor. Calm down. Please, calm down. Why so serious? I mean, my goodness. I've talked about for a long time how wrestling fans get a bad rap. Because while we are marks and we are crybabies, it's the wrestlers and the people in the wrestling business that are the biggest crybabies and the biggest marks of all. And Cody Rose is yet another exhibit of this clearly being the case. And it's striking to me how much it just lashes out insecurity and lack of self-esteem and so many other things. And just to pick on Cody, just in general... My goodness. And what I'm talking about, in case you're not familiar, somebody asked me, I think it was Julius Wright on Twitter last night, thanks a lot for that, <sniffs> asked me my thoughts on something Cody Rhodes had tweeted, I think in response to somebody in the Q&A on Twitter, about NXT and the guys and gals coming up from an NXT, and then Vince holds them back. And he said, to summarize, paraphrase, that Vince doesn't hold anybody back, they maybe don't have it, they maybe don't work hard enough, variety of different reasons, but Vince doesn't hold him back. And as far as for Cody, he got lazy, he got out of shape, and that's why it didn't work out there. My response was, in tweet form, I think it's a great example of Cody Rhodes taking accountability for himself and his career trajectory, which I commend him for. That said, it's a political answer and not exactly grounded in reality. To say Vince doesn't hold people back is just flat out false. I stand by everything I said, because everything I said I believe to be true. Furthermore, the first part of that was I thought very complimentary of Cody. I did not mock him, I did not make fun of him. In fact, I commended him, which is exactly the type of answer you would give in a corporate political world. Think about this, so let me read it right back. I think it's a great example of Cody Rhodes taking accountability for himself in his career trajectory, which I commend him for. It's a type of language we use in the corporate world, in the business world, every single day. So I know corporate political type of answers for the business world because it's what I have to deal with every day. Here's what Cody Rhodes came back at me with, and I quote, Don't comment directly on my tweet as if I don't see it. How's my answer to a fan in a random Q&A remotely political? I have zero to gain. I worked there. You didn't. You bought a ticket, not an education. Sit the fuck down. Unquote. Good lord. Now you would think somebody like Cody Rhodes, who comes from wrestling royalty, being the son of the American Dwayne Bebe, Virgil Reynolds, Dusty Rhodes, and his half-brother being Goldust, Dustin Rhodes, you would think he would have better sense about him. You would think he would have better control over his emotions. You would think he would have a better ability to grasp the entire concept of the entire tweet that was sent to him about him and, of course, he failed on all of those fronts. Imagine my utter and complete lack of surprise. Again, don't ever let anybody tell you whether you like me or not or agree with what I'm saying in this video or not. Don't ever let anybody tell you that wrestling fans are the biggest crybabies and the biggest marks. Because time after time after time, it's the wrestling business, the people in the wrestling business, the wrestlers themselves, that consistently, steadily, always prove themselves to be the biggest marks and crybabies of all. It's true. And as far as what Cody Rhodes said, it's like, dude, calm down. You got a beautiful wife. You're a good man for taking in these dogs. You get to wrestle around the world. You've seen the world. You've worked at Survivor Series and Royal Rumble and SummerSlam at WrestleManias. You've done all these great things, made plenty of money. Now you're doing your thing with the Bullet Club in Japan and ROH. You're showing that you can have a nice living in professional wrestling outside of WWE. You're preparing for that all-in show whenever that is in 2018. Like you've got so many things on your plate, so many positive things going for you in your life. Why would you be bothered with some bum on the internet like me? And especially for the people that either like me or don't like me that are watching this video that are familiar with me or not. Just know that I've said far, 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 far more offensive, far, far, far more trollish, far, far, far more, you know, instigative type of things than this. 
This was not designed to elicit this type of reaction. It just was not. It worked to my advantage. I got a reaction out of it. And again, who's the worker here? I'm the one that's calm. Who's the one getting all upset about something that really wasn't all that bad? Just think about that for a second. But talking about don't comment directly on my tweet as if I don't see it. Yes, Cody, because I went at Cody Rhodes in my response, which would specifically be me saying, maybe there's a chance I hope the guy sees it. Because I didn't realize it would show up in your mentions. I mean, give me a break. And then talking about How's my answer to a fan in a random Q&A remotely political? Because you're flat out distorting reality. You're just flat out wrong and you know it. Even if it wasn't personally your own specific experience, you know it's been there. Hello, Zack Ryder. Hello, Kofi Kingston. Hello, Cesaro. Not to mention what Ryback's talked about, CM Punk has talked about, and so many other guys have talked about over the years. You're clearly distorting reality. You might not think you're lying, but for all intents and purposes, you are. That's the epitome of corporate and political spin. That's the name of the game. Telling somebody they suck without coming out and telling them they suck. Giving them the old opportunity sandwich. Telling them something good about themselves. Put in the middle something they need to work on and why they're going to be able to do it. Opportunity sandwich. Again, basic business stuff that I don't know if Cody Rhodes is going to grasp here. But there's nothing wrong with you making that political type of answer. But to say it's not political is, again, disingenuous and just a flat-out lie. Because I would really actually question you if you weren't making political answers. Because at this point in time, why would you want to burn bridges with WWE? Regardless of what people get caught up with in New Japan and ROH and working the indies, that's great. And you can make a living. Omega, The Young Bucks, Cody, proving it can be done. But still, by far the biggest show in town in the world when it comes to professional wrestling is WWE. Doesn't make it the best by any stretch of the imagination, but it is clearly the biggest. Why is that? Because they do the most business and it's not even close. When one of these other wrestling companies starts getting traded on the New York Stock Exchange, when one of these other companies produces the type of financial sheet that the WWE does, even with them cooking their books the way that they do, then we'll talk. Why would you burn your bridges there? It's all about leverage. Why would you eliminate the biggest show in town? Because when you're trying to decide in the future whether you want New Japan or WWE, why would you not want to have both of these companies make offers for you, which naturally drives up the price, which means it's a more advantageous situation for you. So either you're lying to me or you're terrible at business. It's one of the two. Why would you undercut your own leverage that makes absolutely no sense and then the whole thing about I work there and you didn't this is just dumb this is like so many other people including wrestlers so many of these wrestlers will sit there and tweet out about UFC and crap marking out for something that's directly taking away business from them acting like they know what the hell they're talking about most of you have never fought a day of MMA or UFC in your damn lives what the hell do you know about it if we're using wrestler logic to wrestling fans the same logic applies same logic applies in sports same logic applies every time whether it's you Cody or anybody else that's a wrestler complains about a hotel rental car company airline you didn't work for him you don't work for him so what the hell would you know about how things are supposed to be. It's just dumb, dumb, stupid logic is what it is. And are you going to tell me that so many others that have worked for the company that have said things that directly contradict you and back up what I've said, which I don't even need them to say it. I don't need any dirt sheet to tell me. I've got eyes. I've got ears just like you do. What does that mean? Do they not know even though they work there? Does CM Punk not know? Because he worked there, you're different, even though you worked there just like he did? That makes absolutely no sense. I bought a ticket, not an education yet, I haven't bought a ticket to a WWE event in at least 15 years. And there's been several times when they come through here in Richmond, I think about going and then I decide not to. Because the product just isn't good enough and I don't feel like the WWE deserves my money. In part because at times they will hold back people, not to mention all the black wrestlers that have been held back over the years, all of the Asian wrestlers that have been held back over the years, and there's a lot of white ones too that have been held back over the years. Give me a break.
as far as college education, eh, you know, you grew up in a situation that clearly was much better than mine. I do not begrudge you for that. I applaud you for that. You took full advantage of it. You got your college paid for. I'm going to have to start paying for mine in the fall when I go back to school. That's great. But again, just because somebody got a college degree doesn't mean a damn thing. And this is the type of naive crap that somebody that doesn't understand how the real world works would actually say. In no way, shape, or form, when you get into the working world, does that college education more often than not mean two hella beans. You have a lot of people that manage to see and D their ass through college because their mommy and daddy paid for it. And they get out in the real world and they fall flat on their damn face because they have absolutely no working world smarts, no street smarts, no financial smarts, no any smarts. Other than the fact that they managed to con their way through college. What's that degree matter if you're a dipwad? Just saying. But unlike you, Cody, I'll actually have to pay for my own school. And I won't have the benefit of the student loans that put me thousands upon thousands of dollars in student loan debt. I'll have to do it the old-fashioned way. I've earned it. I'm going to have to pay for it myself. And I'll do that, unlike you, when you didn't have to. And then the whole thing about sit the fuck down. How are you going to get so emotional over this? Like, what is wrong with you? You've got so many positive things going on in the world. Why would this bother you so much? I could understand if I was intentionally trying to troll Cody. I could understand if I said something that would elicit this type of response. I could understand if I said something that didn't make any sense whatsoever. But half of it was positive and half of it was pointing out a falsehood in what he said. I stand behind everything. Now I could have come on here and ranted and raved and do what I do. And I do those things for effect. That's what you do. You know, Cody, you try to be a character. You try to act. You try to elevate the volume of who you really are. I could have chosen to do that. But I didn't. Because I thought it was important to emphasize the point that we can get our points across while not getting all bent out of shape and not being big damn crybabies about it. We can just calm down and talk like adults. I'm willing to talk like an adult. Clearly, you and other wrestlers are not. I don't get why you guys are so insecure about so many things, why you're so bothered about the stupidest little thing. Because it's just insanity. Think about this, and I think about this as a man that loves my black woman. If I'm sitting there married to Brandy Rhodes, the hell am I doing tweeting somebody like me? That tweet to me is time I could have spent with her, could have spent walking the dogs, could have spent planning and preparing the all-in event, which I hope is a huge success for you guys in 2018. Could have been working for the next ROA show, the next big New Japan show, and instead you decided to take time out to tweet at me. I'm humbled. I'm thankful. You gave me all types of intention that, frankly, I didn't ask for, and I didn't really care for, but I got it, and I most certainly will take it and capitalize upon it. But goddamn, son, you're a grown-ass man. And I know this is coming from the guy that's doing a video on YouTube, so what does it all mean? And yeah, probably not really much. But hey, Cody Rhodes, calm down. Calm the hell down. You know you're full of crap, and you also know that what I said wasn't that particularly bad. If we want to get into jerk mode and we want to get savage, believe me, I can get savage. And there was no way in the world you can keep up. For some of the people that are come on, come on here and defend Cody Rhodes, keep this in mind. Kissing these wrestlers' asses is going to get you nowhere. They don't like you. They don't respect you. They think you're crap. And the first chance they get, they will go out of their way to make sure they let you know that's exactly what you are and who you are to them. And just because one person's known and the other person isn't, doesn't make me right or wrong, doesn't make him right or wrong either. And I think that's a very important point. In this particular case, Cody Rhodes got caught up in his emotions like he was a teenage girl. And then, of course, his butt buddy Randy Orton had to chime in. At two, Orton? How ironic. The guy that can't control his emotions 
is sitting there backing up his buddy who can control his. Hey, Cody Rhodes, calm the hell down, please. <laughs>